Hey, um, I'm curious what you thought of just the uh, the game kind of presentation with the crowd noise and you know just the way it kind of looked and what it might mean like for the regular season. Uh, yeah, I kind of I think everybody kind of liked it. I think it was a little, you know, as we go forward, I I think as we get used to it, it may, you know, I don't know if guys are gonna, you know, have any different kind of feelings, but. I, I, for today, I thought everybody kind of had really good uh, reaction to it. It was different, that's for sure. Um, it feels like there's a crowd there, but there's nobody in the seats. Um, I thought it was kind of nice, actually. Thanks. Other questions? What is the question? Uh, Steven. First, you're talking about having Joey out there this morning and just how. how you know how that process has worked out that he's back and what you expect of him here in the next few days. Yeah, we got to be careful with Joey. It was really good to see him. Good to see him taking BP. Um, you know, we just got to be careful, obviously. Yeah, you know, in game situations, he's probably just going to take some live at bats tomorrow. We have kind of an earlier group with three pitchers. Some of our other, our uh, you know, Mathis and a few guys that are off in the game are going to kind of take those at bats. And us being off, we're going to be off on Sunday as well. So I think it just gives Joey a little bit of a. You know, some live at bats maybe tomorrow, take it easy, and then, you know, the off day, and then Monday we'll probably uh, get a little bit more uh, game reps. Evaluate one weekend of this thing. What's that? How would you evaluate one weekend of to summer camp? <laughs> I'm not allowed to use the word, so um, I'm going to call it spring training 2.0. Okay. I'll get fined by our president um, if I say that word, so. Um, no, it's been. I, I feel like you know, it's it's, as, it's gone as smoothly as, as we could have expected. Uh, I you know, I didn't know what to expect coming in. I didn't know how the testing was going to be. You know, the guys, how they were going to be comfortable around each other, and overall, I mean, the, the attitude, the energy, the way they're competing. You know, in inter squad games, uh, I, you know, I have high expectations for our guys, but you know, they've in some ways exceeded those because guys are ready. They're hungry. They want to win, and they're kind of showing it obviously uh, out there on the field. All right, man, thanks. Alex, you got a question? Yeah, Woody, I just want to follow up with the uh, Joey Gallo. Do you feel like he's going to be in tip-top shape by the time opening day starts? Uh, knowing Joey, yeah, I, I, I do. I, I fully expect him. I, I know timing-wise at the plate, you know, it's, it's going to be tough for everybody. But, you know, Joey might not get as many at-bats as he would like. But I have a really good feeling he's going to be fine. Um, we're going to do his, the best we can to – to get him without risking injury, you know, as many bats as we possibly can get him. Um, and the beautiful thing is we can do that. So once he's fully ready to go, like I said, we're going to be, you know, tiptoe a little bit in the beginning because we don't want to obviously pull an oblique or anything like that. Uh, so the you know, first three or four days might look a little different. After that, once he's, you know, if we feel like he's fully healthy and ready to take game at bats, um, we could probably set some other things up and he'd probably get more at bats than he normally does just to get ready. Evan Grant. Hey, Chris. Um, uh, I'm curious. Uh, first of all, you're off Sunday, completely off. But you just not going to work out on Sunday? Um, we kind of gave the option to the guys. You know, I kind of the way they've been going at it. I mean, you look at there's a lot of there's a lot of gameplay going on. You know, guys are stealing. They're they're, they're pretty much ready to go. So I, you know, I think it's good for a lot of guys to take off. To be honest with you, um, typically in a spring training setting, we would. We don't have any pitching schedule for that day. So if a guy, you know, begs me to come in and work out, um, I'm sure Joey's going to want to come in and take some swings since he's been off. So, you know, we're obviously not going to restrict anybody from coming in. Um, I'm just going to encourage guys to take the day. You know, they've been really getting after it. Like I said, they've been, you know, physically getting after it every day since we've been here. So a lot of guys need that break. Curious as to um, what, how animated have your conversations been with your coaches in regarding to how you attack extra innings? Um, yeah, we've, we've spent a lot of time on it. You know, I had a, you know, we had a, a, a group, you know, part of our BP groups today was, you know, a discussion with myself and some of our hitting coaches and just, you know, my mentality when it comes to, to you know, the extra innings, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's a chance to win a game. So it's, it's no longer the, you know, I call it the round in BP that we say, okay, run around second, nobody out get them over, get them in, whatever you want to call it. Like, we've all heard that a million times. This is to win a baseball game, a Major League Baseball game, that could potentially win us a division or a playoff spot. So I don't want to take it lightly. And obviously, there's a lot that goes into it. And I want them to understand, you know, what I'm thinking. So, you know, the, the mentalities match. 
you know, match the strategy, which matches the, you know, the game planning. Everything has to kind of coordinate um, together. And, you know, if that happens, if guys fail, I, I don't really care, you know, as long as their mentality is in the right spot. So um, there's just a lot of dialogue, a lot of dialogue among the players, among our staff. Um, and it's something that, you know, I told Luke Farrell today, like, you might be in that situation more times than you think this year. Uh, just based on the way our, you know, our bullpen is structured and maybe we're in the 11th, 12th inning, you just don't know. And so you don't know who's going to get those innings at times and you don't know which at-bats, you know, who's going to be that critical at-bat that gets that at-bat in the 10th inning. Rule. What's that? Do you hate this rule? No. I mean, it is what it is. Everybody has to deal with it. So I, I don't hate it. I just, I'm, I can hate it all I want, but I have to deal with it, so. I might as well have enjoyed it and uh, learned to love it instead of hate it because it's not going to change, you know, based on Chris, Wood, Chris Woodward's opinion of it. So we're going to have to deal with it. And what's your thought on on bunting in these situations in general? I know you're not a huge bunt guy in general, but what about in these extra innings? I think it totally it, it depends if we're the visiting team or the home team. If we're the home team and they haven't scored, of course we bunt. Like I mean, it, you know, I mean, not every guy, but. You know, it makes a, a ton of sense. If we're the visiting team, we don't know how many runs we're going to need to win the game. We just don't know that because we do know that they're going to have a guy on second with nobody out. So if we play for the one run, you know, now that the winning run is standing at home plate to start the next inning. So we can't get, you know, it, the, the mindset from the visiting standpoint is much different than when we're on the home side. You know, I told our guys today, when we're the home team, we know exactly what we need to win that game. When we're the visiting team, we have no idea. Now, I know who's going to come in to pitch. And I know who's coming in our batting order, but I have no idea what the next half inning is going to look like. So um, I think it's just getting our guys to kind of wrap their head around that. And it just changes the mentality a little bit. How likely do you think you are to have a guy on this roster, at least for the, for the, for the expanded period, that is specifically designed to help you win an extra inning game, particularly as a, as a runner? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely a, the thought that we're, we're talking about a lot. Um, you know, you see, I put Tavares out there today. You know, he, that's obviously if he's on our team, that's that's going to be a huge role for him to come in and, and put pressure on that that opposing pitcher. And something we talk about, obviously, I talk about a ton is just applying the pressure. And if you put a guy out there with that kind of speed, you know, giving up one run can snowball into giving up four just because of the threat on second base. So um, that's something that obviously we've talked about a lot. T.R. Sullivan. Uh, Chris, what is your reaction to getting Joey Gallo back uh, so quickly? Or, I mean, I, mean, I don't know how quickly you expected it, but just getting him back this fast. Um, no, I was kind of expecting it. You know, I, I knew that uh, I knew the testing protocol, and I, you know, when you when you intake test, the thing is you don't know how long you've had it before you intake test. So during the season, I would expect it to be you know the 10 to 14 days, uh, you know, because we've been testing negative, 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 and all of a sudden a positive. But when in the intake test, you don't know if they've had it for 12, 15 days, or one day. So I, you know, I just didn't know. I was hoping, you know, I was, obviously fingers were crossed every day that you know one of those tests was going to come back negative. And the fact that he had no symptoms, you know, he felt fine the whole time. And I know there's a lot of people that have, you know, are asymptomatic. But I was hoping it was going to be faster, and you know, we got it done pretty fairly quickly. Other questions? Chris. <clears throat> uh, not to keep on the Gallo train, but uh, you mentioned like his, you know, talk about, talk about like his, um, like his health, you know, his conditioning and everything by the beginning of the season. Is there a situation where you could possibly, um, I'll try to admit, like, tend to hold back a little bit just so he can be in games at the beginning if he's not quite where you want him just because it's a 60 game season, you might want your potentially best hitter in the lineup. Um, so rephrase that question again. So I want him in the lineup regardless. Um, I, yeah, we got to be careful. Like, I think he'll be ready for the season. I'm not worried about that. Um, as long as obviously he doesn't get hurt, you know, knock on wood. Um, he should be ready. Timing wise, he just might be a little bit off in the beginning. You know, so it just depends. Some guys, you know, they need one week of at bats. You know, he may, you know, struggle with trying to, I'm just trying to get it in his head that don't stress out about it because that's what creates the issue of my timing's not off, I'm going to stress out. You know, Danny had a little bit of that today. You know, the last couple of games he hasn't done as well as he'd like. 
And so it's like, we got time. Don't worry about it. Um, so Joey, you know, Danny hits the homer today, and now he feels good about himself again. So it's, you know, Joey's, you know, he, he wants to feel great. He wants to be back in there. He's hungry to get back in there. We just got to, you know, he's kind of a wild horse when it comes to that. He'll do too much if you don't tell him, hey, tone it down. Just get what you need the next couple of days. We'll get you some at-bats. And as we get closer to the season, the last week, you know, that way, I, if we build it up that way, the last week he should be perfectly fine and we can get him as many at-bats as possible to get ready for that opening day. Other questions? Another one from TR. Uh, what was your take on uh, Al Gibson today, please, sir? Uh, he was really, really good. Uh, I just thought the uh, the execution, you know, we're sitting back there watching it on our – he didn't miss a spot, I felt like, for first three innings. Um, and the hitters were coming back. Like, Frazier was like, man, he didn't give anything over the middle of the plate. Um, so he looks really good. You know, the velo was there, the, the the way the ball's jumping out of his hand, the execution aspect of it was good. You know, I just wanted to see th third inning, fourth inning, fifth inning, can he, can he maintain that? And you just see the – you know, he feels good about it. He felt really good coming off the field. Health-wise, he feels good. You know, his arm feels good. Um, so it's, it's very encouraging. Other questions? Jeff. Uh, sorry, this was asked earlier. Um, what do you think about the, the crowd noise and the, the trying to treat it like a game? Uh, yeah, it was asked, but it was. I thought it was cool. I thought it was. It was different. It was. It felt a little bit more like if you didn't look in the stands, you, know, you could hear the murmur of the crowd. It almost got. You know, they booed Fraser. I think you know, on one of the plays. You know, it was, I was kind of laughing at that. Um, you know, it felt a little bit like a real game. You know, as far as with the, with the fans. Uh, I think our guys have done a great job of kind of ignoring all that surrounding stuff. And you know, we had music playing at times. You know, through the rest of the games, which you know, obviously we've never done. Uh, but overall, I think, you know, guys liked it. They liked to hear their name. You know, the announcer, you hear Chuck Morgan announcing their name. It was, I thought it was uh, very cool. Other questions? This will be the last one. Evan Grant. Along those lines, Chris, um, the Rangers announced today that they're going to uh, put the cardboard cutouts in the stands during games. Um, we've seen that in Korea. And I was just wondering what your general feeling on how creepy that's going to be. <laughs> I don't think it's creepy at all. I think it's great. Um, it's, it just They're not going to move, so it's going to look different. But, you know, if you just glance around and you just see it looks like people in the stands, I, I, I think it's, you know, listen, we got to get creative. This is something that we've never been, that, you know, nobody's ever dealt with this before. So if that's what it takes to kind of get a little normalcy on the field, I have no problem with it. You know, and I, I've watched those games and I've seen those people in the stands and it's, Listen, it, it, we got like I said, we got to get creative in this scenario, and um, I think everybody's kind of open to that idea. Thank you.